Welcome back to the Contrast Project Lounge podcast. In this inaugural uh, live stream, we're going to be talking about AI technology, artificial intelligence. You know, it's it's it is the future and it is here. And I want to say hello and welcome to my guest hosts, Mr. Jim Ellaby. So, Jim, how you doing? All right, man. Great to be here. And good to see our our, uh, our our special guest faces too. I know, I know. We have Mr. Damien Levan. So, Damien, how are you doing? I'm exquisite. How are you, Tracy? Good to see you. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Why do people you, laugh when exquisite. I say that? Why do people laugh? It's it's the it's something I have been I've been using that moniker for the last four or five years. I borrowed it from Badu. Yeah. Erica Bobby, oh, no, you get I, it from her. Oh, well, yeah. that's exquisite. And, and, yeah, it's exquisite. <laughs> yeah. And and you are Mr. Tim Fielder. Tim, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. It's my pleasure to be here with my good friends and my new friends. Well, we're going to be nice talking to about some really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I want I I really want to start out this conversation really uh with a few questions for my uh, co-host, Mr. Jim Allaby. So, Jim, uh, you happen to be a professional in the AI industry. And I know that a lot of people are, you know, talking about, uh, you know, AI as it pertains to the arts, which are which are very important. And we'll get to that in a minute. I got two people here on the bottom here. Uh, uh, what do you see now how do you perceive what the future of ai is in view in and in, in uh business uh healthcare government uh where are we going with this ai thing well you know first of all i'm not really an expert in ai um i just work with an ai company we have some experts <laughs> over there that are just absolutely amazing that do data analytics and they do deep learning right. models and stuff like that. I'm, I'm just not quite there, but, um, uh, but you know, kind of what, what I'm seeing is there's a lot of, you know, when it comes to business and industry, mm -hmm. it's, it's really very, very useful right. because it can be, it can be predictive, you know, like, um, uh, some of the things that uh, we feed uh, a deep learning model can predict, you know, with some certainty what might happen in a given situation, you know. Um, so it's basically taken a, a whole lot of data. We have these data scientists and AI folks that build these uh, models that eventually they teach themselves and they can make some predictions with that 90 to 92 percent. Right accuracy. Um, as a matter of fact, I was talking to a guy uh, uh, at one of the poison centers in, I think it was Arizona, and they have a system there that uh, tracks transplants from beginning to end. Labs, you know, what the transplant was, demographic, all that stuff. And um, of course, you know, people get transplants, have to get labs all the time and um, have to get checked all the right, time. Right. You know, they have an age, they have a sex, they have a gender, you know, they have an ethnicity and all this kind of stuff. So, um, and the, the, they have a system behind that um, at this point now that can predict pretty much whether that transplant is going to be rejected or not. Wow. Wow. And take mm. preemptive measures, you know, stuff like that. Wow. Wow. Um, Wow. Another another really great application is with the Veterans Administration. You know, they have the Fire Watch program, which is to prevent, uh, hopefully prevent, um, you know, a suicide for veterans, you know. So we have, you know, th you know, thousands of years, decades worth of data to look at. And, you know, you find after these learning models go, go doing their thing that, you know, when they're trying to find out where should we put our resources, that it's counterintuitive because you would think, hey, let's put the resources in Jacksonville yeah. where we have yeah. the most veterans. Yeah. But no, yeah. that's not what yeah. it is. Yeah. You put your resources where? 
where there's the least amount of veterans. And this goes across mm. all demographics, all states, all around the country. Um, why? Because they don't have anybody to talk to. And why didn't a human figure that out? <laughs> so I don't know. But, you know, and I don't have somebody <laughs> to talk to about my stuff. It, it makes me feel bad. It makes me feel depressed, you know. But right. when I have fellowship, right. Right. like you guys, I can talk about when I fell off the loft. <laughs> I can share my <laughs> my stuff. You know, I, I feel that. So anyway, so, you know, this is some really great stuff that artificial intelligence can do in industry. Plus, we have stuff that can, like, look at a carpet, and you know, that got in a house that got flooded. And instead of cutting a piece of the carpet out, bringing it back to the laboratory and spending hours and hours and hours trying to figure out what kind of carpet right, it was, right? right da, da, da. This stuff will go in there and say, hey, this carpet is uh, was made by Monsanto in 1963, wow. and they no longer make it, but the closest match is this, and it costs X number of dollars per square foot when they do the renovation, you know, that kind of thing. So there's some really awesome stuff that can be done with AI for in health, for the community. Yeah. But then, you know, yeah. there's also really bad stuff that can be done at AI, like what they're doing to Taylor Swift right now, right? So, um, right, right. So if, if hey. people don't know, they're taking Taylor Swift and doing some AI generated art with putting her head on right. bodies Crazy that she probably shit. Don't, doesn't want to be placed on top of. You, you know, know, you yeah. know, you so, know it's, 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 it, it really is a bunch of bullshit. I don't care if she's a billionaire uh and and he is not uh she happens to be his girlfriend and she goes to the games i don't you know i understand there's that whole you know media thing where everybody wants to be a part of that shit but i mean at, at the end of the day they're a bunch of you know they're they're two grown-ups and they're doing their thing and on the uh, <laughs> On the outside of what they're doing, some people are making a shitload of money. Well, in either case, it's taking AI. It's like any anything that comes up, gentlemen, um, you know, you can always use it for bad. You know, we invented a scissor. I mean, you can do bad things yeah. with a scissor. We invented film and you can do bad things with film. You know, so we invented AI. We can do bad things with AI as well. So you, you, we invented the automobile and we can do some pretty bad things with an automobile, which we've seen recently in the news. So we can't say that inventions are bad by nature. It's really who's using it, you know. But when it comes to art, you know, Damien and Tim, you know, when you see art out there and it's either all AI, part AI, it's a tool. I mean, how does it fit into your world as artists? I know, you, right? You want to go first, or? Yeah, I, I guess I could speak on that as artists. Um, yes, yes, one, yes. I, I have to always stay, first of all, but if, I've always been an artist since I recall, but I've always been a technologist. Um, I will date myself because I remember building websites on GeoCities wow. pre AOL, okay? So I, I'm very familiar wow. with all things web, all things web 2.0. And now AI, has, as we are now in the 3.0 space, it's still, it's rapidly growing. It's rapidly evolving. But for me as an artist, I, I was in the middle of writing a book, minding my own business. Uh, I start seeing all of this AI art and I was like, wait a minute, who's, how are people doing this? What, what are they doing? What tool are they using? And I heard about Mid Journey. I will give a big shout out to Obscura Lux, Jacksonville artist, amazing photographer, camera lover, by the way. She's got an amazing camera collection. I'm awesome there. Um, yeah. She was the one that told me about Mid Journey. And at the stage where I was in writing my first novel, I was at the character developing stage, developing and falling in love with my characters. So I started taking what I had already written and was learning mm. mid-journey and prompting it with sections for my book, right. which rendered art from my imagination. And it it allowed me to see and write even way, in ways that I haven't even experienced. So I used mid-journey to help me visually see things so that I, as a writer, can write what I see. Oh, I'm, I'm going to 
you know, take a mental note of that because I'm in the middle yeah. of writing a book and I've been in the middle of it in the same spot for about a year now. So it tells you how prolific I am. But I'm going to try yeah. that. Just yeah, but I did try mean, that with the lyrics because I do write, I have a recording studio here and I do write a lot of music. And yeah. I, um, I, I might like, so I tried the other day with maybe a first, you know, verse and bridge of one of my songs and, and gave it to, uh, I don't remember whether it was chat GPT or something oh, yeah. and said, you know, finish this off for me, you know, write a chorus or whatever. And it was really bad. It was, it awesome. was like, <laughs> it was like the rhymes that you would get from like, really? No. <laughs> but so, so I will tell you one thing I will tell you, Jim, learning, learning this world of AI, it's, it's input versus output. It, it's a machine. We're talking to machines here. Okay. So when we communicate with a machine, it's based on how we prompt it. Reese, good to see you. Welcome. Here's the um, Reese machine. Yes, the Reese uh -huh. machine just arrived. So as, as I was saying, it's just like learning, uh, prompting, like all things AI, it takes you as a person to tell this bot what you want to accomplish. If you don't give it that much instructions, it's going to give you bare minimum, right? So the more you give it, the better results you get from it. So it's, you know, I'm, that's what I'm learning, you know, with anything. Well, that's really good. That's a good, great yeah. idea. Go ahead. It's, it's version six now, six now, Tracy. It's, it's not four anymore. It's definitely six. Uh, should I, should I speak up? Tracy just I'll... having fun. <laughs> but, but Tim? Yeah. So, uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a visual artist. Uh, and I started out as a traditional artist uh, in graphic novels, uh, comics, that type of thing. Yeah. So, I God, I started back in 1987 professionally. I'm in New York City, but I'm from Mississippi, actually. It's an interesting thing. So I am now here uh, in New York City, and I work for a while in the comic book industry until the comic book industry effectively crashed. Uh, and uh, a bit of lifelong turmoil and went to Atlanta, Georgia and started working for Mr. Jim Alabiso, my good friend for almost 30 years now, by his animation studio, check it out, called No Bones. <laughs> no, no Bones. No Bones Studio. So Jim, Jim Alabiso, uh, well, this was Atlanta, but Jim Alabiso and Kieran Quinn effectively gave me my start in the digital art. Um, that was, I started working in late 96. No, I started working in 97. I worked there for about eight, nine months. And within one year, I stopped working on paper. And that was almost 30 years ago, with 20, uh, 1997. That's when we, we got you that Wacom tablet. Which they were like drug yeah. dealers with that tablet. Uh, yeah. Once you do it, you can't go back. So... I've, I'm literally, the light coming from this space is a 32 inch Cintiq that I use for my work because I can't see as well anymore. Because back when I was talking with Jim, of course, I had lots of hair, but that no <laughs> longer exists now. That hair is gone now, you know? But uh, anyway, to answer the question, um, I have always found myself as a graphic novelist uh, to be an innovator. I'm always trying to, as as uh, uh, Damien was saying about being a technologist, I use technology to do my work. I always have. Yeah. Uh, and the one characteristic I've noticed, every time a major paradigm happened, right? First time it was digital audio, right? And I said, oh my God, what is happening? I'm not a musician, but my, my second oldest brother was a is an amazing musician. And we saw him oh, that's right. That's right, Boston, Boston yeah, Fielder. Yeah, he transitioned from acoustic instruments to digital audio. And it just got, you know, more and more advanced where, what was it? I forget the name of the program, but it was before Pro Tools. It was, it, it, it was that's all what's of behind the, me. Oh, oh, that's all right. that's all the master yeah. tapes go away. Exactly. Splicing, all that. Exactly. Hmm. And, and, and doubling up tracks and things like that. So what happens is that the, anyone who wonders what is going to happen to AI, they just need to look at the digital audio, audio industry. It's, it's right there. It's yeah. going to be on a planetary scale 
in a way that we've never encountered before, but it's basically the same thing, right? So when I started working with Jim, I dabbled with Photoshop, but Photoshop and what's now, back then was called uh, Fractal Painter. Now it's Corel. Oh, fractal Paint. Right? That's right. And that yeah, was... And it was basically that, the parrot. It had the same paradigm as pen and ink, though, because you kind of like right. touch the pen on the that's color, right. and then you drew, right? That's why we got you, got you that, I think. Uh, so anyway, so that was your first shift. So that was my first shift. Digital illustration changed my life. And while I was with Jim and Karen, they trained me on 3D. I was using uh, Autodesk 3D R4. Which 3D was Studio absolute... Max. No, yeah. it was before Max. You guys were training me on R4. The one before Oh, my Max. goodness. Yes, that's what I used to say every day when I opened up that damn software. But anyway, <laughs> that's what I learned on to start. I had to leave because I had some other stuff I had to address in New York. Uh, 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 but Jim and Kieran basically gave me the tools to actually survive. I raised my kids off of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, my ability wow. to work in digital wow. technology. And first, so again, it was Photoshop and di digital illustration. And then it became 3DS Max. And so I was using 3DS Max to supplement my 2D illustration work. So instead of, I, I, I got my first job in the gaming industry with Ubisoft. So that's where I found out that you could build 3D objects, right? Not go through the hell of building and rendering, even though I was became ultimately a fairly good modeler. But the time it would take to render, you could actually paint over those three ob 3D objects. And that's what became what's known as a paint over technique. It's highly used mm -hmm. in the video game industry. So we would do that. We would do that for about, right. Well, let me say this. Let me say this. I'll be very quick. I'll be very quick. So once I moved from 3D, I began to, well, straight 3D, I began to move to game engines around the early to mid 2000s because the renderers had become so fast. When AI appeared at the beginning of 2022, I wasn't that blown away. By the end of 2022, I got depressed for two weeks because I was like, oh my God, this is the first time in my life where a piece of technology can do what I do better and faster. And faster. Uh, That's more important. Yeah, and faster. That's yeah. right. So what I had to do within about two weeks, instead of feeling sorry for myself or going on these, you know, pitchfork crusades like a lot of my colleagues do, you know, I decided what can I do to use AI as a tool for my already existing skill set? Uh, and it yeah. has changed my life. I've gone all in on utilizing AI. My go-to software is this program called Doodle AI by a programmer, Vlad Vladimir Palacio, and it has changed my life. If I have a chance to show you guys what I've done, I showed Jim a little bit the other day. Yeah, this was All like this series where he started with a sketch. They tuned it up a little bit, right? And then yeah, he gave yeah. it, did some stuff, AI stuff to it, and then did some painting and did some more stuff and Photoshop if, and if, did some if, more if AI I may, stuff. If I may say something, I just, I, yeah. I, I, I don't want to miss what you said, Jim, earlier, because I didn't have an opportunity to address something you said earlier. It's about how people use the tool. It's a tool. Right. It's a, yeah. it's a machine, right? Like I was saying, input versus output. That's right. If you have a wicked dark soul and you want to say some evil things and make it create some stuff, it's there for that. It will do right. what you, sure. it will do that, Which right? you can do with Which a pen do, and yeah. ink and exactly and Microsoft right. I mean, Word. Right. Yeah. It's all about the where the, the the person who is sitting behind the keyboard prompting this machine telling it what to do. It but really depends could, on how exquisite yeah. they are. Okay. Not everyone can be that exquisite. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh, wow. It's upside down, sorry. Yes. So Damien, what were the prompts behind what you just showed us? So this was, this is a, this was my very first magazine. I, it, it, funny story about this real quick. This is mid 
Correct. Yeah. Mid journey is great, but mid journey is not the end all be all. I will have to, I, I've, I've tried them all. I tried lots of different tools with this one. Mid journey, I was able to take, because of the license, I can actually use the images to sell them. I can't copyright. You can't copyright AI. You just can't. The copyright law is just, it's not, they don't, it's just, you can't do it right now. So with that in mind, I created this, this particular magazine. <laughs> the, well, well, yeah, it, well, it is protected under my company that I own. It's called Inc. <laughs> Professor Clock Media Incorporated. It, it, it belongs to my company. Uh, but this particular magazine, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, thanks. Yeah. No, what I was, if, if, if I may, Tracy, if I may, if I may, what I was saying was when I created this, um, this was a, the anniversary of my first, of me being an incorporated for the first year. And I'm like, wow, it's February, February 1st. Today is two years since my company has wow. been incorporated. The anniversary is today. Man. How convenient. Thank you. On the anniversary, I said, well, what the hell am I going to do for Black History Month? Because I haven't been doing anything all these years. Like I'm celebrating because I'm black. I don't have to celebrate. It's Black History Month every day of my life. <laughs> so, you know, I decided to create a magazine based on all these. I had thousands of images that have been prompting because I was learning how to prompt wow. this mid journey, prompt this machine. I had thousands of images. Like, what do I do with these images? I think I'll put together a magazine. I decided to put a 80 page UV coated high gloss wow. magazine. Wow. Didn't have my, my book wasn't even finished. I was writing the book, but it wasn't even published wow, yet. Could you hold I that up? A, hold that up. Wow. Yeah. So this, you know, there are some images in the book that are, that I designed. Of course, it's Photoshop plus a, a bunch of, and I use adult illustrator. I use in design. I use a myriad of different tools to overlay my characters on top of these images as well. Uh, can can um, I ask a question, Damien? Okay. For good. your yes. magazine, did you, Although I understand regarding the image generation using AI, did mm -hmm. you also, were you able to figure out a way to use AI to do your magazine layout or was that an InDesign? I'll be, I'll be honest with you. This came out a year ago. So Man. think about how advanced <laughs> we are now. This was a year ago. you can do it now? Brother. Serious. Really? Yes, I'm certainly can. So, so since then, this is the book. In the book, right. in the book, it's just the book for, you know, this is the whole novel. These characters are what I wrote in this book. Wow. So when you, when, if you get this magazine, I think there's only like 10 or 15 left. I'm, I only did 60 copies because I had to pay. I'm not even making any money off these magazines. Where's mine? I'm just doing it because. Let me, let me, let me ask you. <laughs> yeah. if you don't mind. I'm yes, going to I'm going to ask. Absolutely. So, hey, so but, but before you start talking, Reese, we, uh, we Thank need to that. introduce Reese. Right. Reese, can you tell us know. about Reese for a second and then ask hey your question everybody. because you came I'm, on and we haven't said yeah. hey, Reese. And I'm, Hi, I'm Reese. so sorry. I'm, I'm Reese Dickerson. Listen, I'm very familiar. Reese is one of our guest hosts today. <laughs> he was too busy so, yeah. preaching to get here earlier. <laughs> no, listen. Here. <laughs> so I, 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 I am Reese Dickerson. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I got to have your Tracy. priorities. I mean, is it the Lord or our <laughs> podcast? Give me a break. <laughs> Listen, so that's so that's so funny. So I'm in the I'm in the back. So I'm Reese Dickerson for everybody who doesn't know me. Damien Lamar and I have been friends for almost twenty more than oh. twenty years. I mean, we knew the years. We knew right. we do that. Yeah, we know all, right. all yeah. those years. So so <laughs> it, it's it I, I consider it such an honor and a privilege to be here. Tim, it's so good to meet you, brother. I, I, I just you. recently followed your page. Uh I'll be digging into what you're doing. Damien, I can't say how proud I am of you, brother, that you've left left here. You have gone and you have rebranded yourself and become this genius. I mean, I'm sitting mm. back. Listen, I remember, mm. I remember the times that we shared the microphone and we shared the stage and you've just rebranded yourself. And so that, that encourages me. That keeps me. Jim, oh, thank you. So you, the way you, sir, and I, I have to do this. This is just my heart. I want to thank you from the first time that we met when we finally met online and you and I finally spoke and I shared with you the book that I'm, uh, the books that I'm, uh, working on the books that I'm writing that are still stuck inside of me. Jim, you were so kind and you were so, so, I mean, so willing to just come out and say, Reese, jump in, let's do it. Give me a call. We'll make it happen. Tracy, listen, I can't say enough. You gave me my, you, man, you have, you have, you have done things for me. And just by being on the show, on the podcast, the city governments are now calling me to do shows and governments are now calling me to write songs and to sing songs and 
be in places that I never thought I'd be. I'm going to Brazil. Yeah. This, As a matter of fact, so the reason I was late, let me just say this for the audience, everybody's here. I'm a singer. You know, that's one of the things I do. So I just got hired by the, I just got hired by this new church. The pastor's from Brazil. His wife is wow. there, both from New Jersey, but he's Brazilian. So they, they just hired me last week. Uh, this is my second week here. They've already planned two trips for me to go and sing in front of 10,000 people in Brazil. Of course. Of course. So I'm like, dang it, hell no. Now get out of here. Ah. Of course. <laughs> I've been waiting. You know I've been waiting. I'm so glad I get to hear this first. <laughs> so, wow. I'm, so I'm so excited. So I'm so excited. So Tracy, I... <laughs> so Tracy, I, I thank you for that. And then, you know, God is just opening up uh, up opportunities. Um, we got a new basketball team here in Jacksonville called Jackson 95. It's big plug for them. Uh, they initially called me and asked me to sing at the inaugural game on March 15th. I got a phone call from, from the owner the other day and said, uh, you know what? We've decided to change that. You're going to host and be the new face of Jacks 95. Wow. So I host every game now. So things, things are starting to happen. I'm like, you know, I'm so, so I'm so excited about that. But all of that aside, me introducing myself. I love AI. I, so listen, I got it. So I have to say, I, so I, I'm, I'm so fascinated with, with AI. I'm so fascinated with technology. I've been trying to trying to do it, and it seems like every time I try and do it, it just falls apart. So I don't know. So I'll be pulling on you, Damien, Jim, Tim. So, so listen, if I may, bring, if I if I, I have a response to that, this is for okay. us. The, everybody that loves Star Wars will get this. We're we're Jedi's, right? Master okay. Master Yoda, when he talked to Luke Skywalker, he said, "Do or do not. There is no try." So I removed the word try from my vocabulary years ago. We don't try anymore. We have to oh, do wow. it or we don't do it. You're going to do it. It's just a matter of when. Brother, thank you. Listen, thank you so much. Listen, Listen, that, sounds masters, like a, man. that sounds like uh, a sermon that they're preaching is inside the building right now. <laughs> do it. So I'm so excited about that. So yeah. So that's <laughs> yeah. Next time so that's we do this, Damien's going to be late because he's preaching. <laughs> well, right. I'm like, Damien, what is going on? So yeah, so I'm, you know, but I'm so excited about this, Damien. It, I, I love your art. Um, Thank you. Tim, I love what you're doing. Uh, Tim, you know, what I've seen, I'm on my phone as well, looking at your work. Uh, Thank you. Man, man, I am, and, and I'm just so, so impressed. There's another guy I introduced to, Tracy and Jim. His name is Adaye Moon. One of my dearest friends, he has a, a company called Rock Gut Art. Leaves on a tree, it's his hand, Instagram handle is Leaves on a Tree. Some of the most amazing AI art that I've ever seen in my life, mm. ever in my life. So I'm fascinated. So you guys, you guys are want, making me want to get it because I shoot photography as well. You're making me want to get into that, you know, to add to my book and to add to my writing and my artwork. So I'm we ready have to talk. Go. I have some, I have some, uh, I will tell you there, case in point, Blue Francois, another amazing photographer. Yeah, I just yeah, love yeah. plugging people. Jacksonville is full of golden gems, by the way. It's yeah. just like, Tim, no, I, sure. I can't wait to have a conversation with you and like really, like really have a yeah, you guys could probably sidebar, like, like talk all night. Oh, literally, I cannot wait. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Uh, but Jacksonville, people don't understand the number of individuals that push the needle forward in that city and have been doing wow. so for years, right? Wow, 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 yeah. The world sees it. it no, make no mistake about it, right? We know that Jacksonville is a huge, 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 huge pond with a whole bunch of fish. We get yeah. it. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. People are, when I up here in, North, in the Northeast, when I talk about how big Jacksonville is, it blows people's minds, but they have no concept right, at the right. same well, time. You know, there's a reason for that, Damien. It's yeah, what's number, that? One, because it's a very young city, yeah. culturally speaking. I mean, just culturally think about speaking, which, yes. Yeah, I mean, 1945, 45, in 1945, Jacksonville and Harlem were identical. You could, there, there are pictures, digital, like go to the archives. As, as a matter of fact, go to the archives in Jacksonville. You'll see images that are identical replicas where New York City and, uh, like, uh, and, and Jacksonville, uh, Forsyth, Forsyth Street were like identical. So well, we, at, why, where, why, where do we why, get off? You know, that is why the, 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 the viaduct next to the Prime Osborne is called the Brooklyn Bridge. That is why what we call Riverside was called Brooklyn because of the similarities. That's why the La Villa area was yeah. where black people were. So, we were the Harlem of the South. And, yeah. you know, our 
leaders and blah 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 didn't want that. To well, I think, well I think because this, of this, this because of this, yeah. from a cultural standpoint, because of this, since we were such a young city, don't forget we got burnt down in 1901, right? Correct. And rebuilt, and all the thing, all the aforementioned things. Is that because we're a young city, people here can make a difference. Where yeah. in a lot of older cities that have been around forever, it's hard to make a difference because there's hard. a there, lot of people. Were, there's millions and millions of people. They, there's three or four million it. people there. Yeah. 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 Exactly. We got a large geographic yeah. location with a population that just doesn't fit it, match it, but, I should say. But if, 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 if I, I just <laughs> want to finish my sentence because yeah, this, go this goes Sorry, back to where Reese, Reese is with. No, it's okay. I mean, this goes back to Reese. Like, it, I know that there are people in Jacksonville. We're we're talking about AI. We don't want to keep the focus yeah. there, but also talk about art. Jacksonville is an art mecca. I know. It is. Yeah. I can count on more than ten, more than two hands, how many physical artists that I've worked with, dined with, watched their work. Like, whether they're doing big giant murals, installments, a uh, huge art scene. And Over Street Christopher Duke Clark. Clark. Over Street Duke Clark. Uh, Christopher uh, uh, Clark. Jill, like, Mary Joan. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, it, the yeah. list go, I can go on and on, but I will, I will use Christopher Clark as an example, as in bringing in Jacksonville, but I'm also bringing in the fact of AI. Christopher, I remember he will literally prompt AI and it would get an image from his mind. And then as an artist, he mastered it or he just, it was that picture that you see. You know how sometimes it's like, let me give you a, if you give me a picture, I can do this and they'll, they'll sketch it out. He prompted AI to be able to do that on large scales. That's so, how you use the tool. You see so what I'm you're, saying? You're, okay. So let me, let me ask, you're saying he used the output from AR as visual reference for his painting. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's how you should use it. Brother. I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's exactly how you use it. People go, oh, I think. You know, I have, I don't like AR because it's, you know, it's taken away from the artist. Well, there's something to be said about people that know that it's AI art. There's a market for people that want AI art. I've had people reach out to me asking me to create NFTs to do this. And I'm very hesitant because mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a thing, you know what I mean? It's like a, and, it's kind and, of a circular reference to, to yeah. use it to create AR art. It's like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, it, but at the same time, like, where do I, where, where do I get out? As a digital artist, I was I'm a digital artist. I'm a graphic artist. I've been using Photoshop. I use, you know, a, a Illustrator in design way before Adobe became up in the picture. You know, I was using it when you had to have a license for it before you have to have a subscription way back in the day. I've been using this tool. You, you get in there, you spend the time, but AI has made things so much easier to accomplish but it is still flawed and you can see it in the art. I can see, well, like at case in point, Mid Journey first came out, there was the whole thing like, why can't Mid Journey render fingers correctly? What is wrong? If, if, I, if I'm asking you to render a beautiful woman, why in the world does she have six fingers? Please explain that to me. You know, and so this let, me, let me ask you this, you know, let me ask you this, Damien, yeah. while you're talking about that, because right now there's always going to be imperfections. Yes. But let's, let's, you know, fast forward like three years from now, right? Right. What happens when it doesn't make mistakes? That's right. They That's can right. render yeah. fingers perfectly. Every wrinkle, every no, it's knuckle, already, it's already every happening. fingernail. And Half you proof. can't tell the difference. <laughs> you don't see the little color bars on the bottom right hand side. We're already there. We're there. We're, it's, not, it's already happening, Jim. That's yeah. the thing. So it's, it's we don't have to wait three years. It's actually happening that fast. The yeah. controls... I'm concerned about the controls of it because if you have people like we we're talking about Taylor Swift earlier, what, what do you, you mean controls people, of it? You you mean controls the, the, the pop, mm, policy? No, no policy surrounding it. But it you there should not you should not be able to use a celebrity a celebrity figure or a, a public figure that person's image should not be used and in, to incorporate into your art in any way. Okay. It's just okay. you wouldn't do that. In, in, in real life, like, why would you do that in, in general? Like, it's like, we have to think about, like, common sense. You got to use common sense these days, you know? Mm -hmm. why, who would do that? But people are doing it. So there needs to be some kind of controls around stuff like that. Okay. I, you know, I think... Okay. Um, look look it, what Tracy it, did to me. 
I know. I'm ah. still waiting for Tracy does, to do a I, picture like that of me. I, I sent him doesn't, stuff. Doesn't look I anything like, like me. me. But I want to. I wish I looked <laughs> like that. <laughs> I, ha- I have but, presents for all of you guys, it, but they'll come post the show. So when this show is up, you know, Damien, I'm going to send you some pictures of me. I need, I need some stuff. <laughs> hey, Tim, after what, after Tim, after what Damien said, do you want to move to Jacksonville now? No, <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, uh, it, yeah, it, he's it, not going no. back. I, I, <laughs> don't, well, don't, well, don't go back with brother. Stay forward. No, no, no. I am eventually, uh, I, b- because Right now, and I haven't told Jim this, I will, my wife and I are eventually going to get a space in New Orleans uh, because okay. that's where she's from. Yes, I married one of the, I married one of those uh, New Orleans ladies and uh, mm-hmm. uh, our parents are elderly. My parents live in Atlanta. So we'll be going back and forth between Atlanta and New Orleans, but we will keep our space in New York City. Yeah. So I can't add another city to the list. <laughs> but you always have a place to lay your head, though, in Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. I mean, you all, oh, oh yeah, 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 of course, of course, yeah. of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so let me, is it okay? Let me speak a little bit as to AI. So in the, okay, in the traditional illustration industry, specifically as it pertains to the entertainment industry, gaming, comics, uh, the, the the level of fiora uh, anti AI is pretty you guys extreme. Guys, calling for me. I got to exit stage left. Love right. you guys. Thank you for having me on. Pleasure. I'm ready for the next show. Listen, we'll talk soon. Good They're to see calling you, me. I got to go sing. It's what I do. Pleasure. Jim, I'll talk to you. Face. I'll talk to you guys. It's good talking to you. Pleasure to see you, Reese. Right. Pleasure to meet you. All right. So let me say this. You want me to continue? Yes. yes. Please. Okay. All right. So. The, the 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 level of of anti anti AI fury is pretty extreme. It's pretty extreme. Uh so for me, I remember I was talking with a, a gentleman. His name is Joel Christian Gill, and Joel mm-hmm. founded the first, I think, Division One A and uh, uh, cartooning program for, at Boston University. He founded that program. And right now I'm doing, in fact, I got an episode that should be up now for my, I'm uh, collaborating with uh, Carnegie Hall uh, as I'm adapting uh, the science fiction short story, The Comet, that was written by W.E.B. Du Bois back in 1920. Wow. And so that's part of the programming that I'm providing for Carnegie Hall. Now, all that to say is that I am utilizing my traditional art skills drawing in the computer, building in 3D, but there is no denying the power of what AI does to expedite the work. I'll explain to you what I mean. Anyone that's a traditional artist that does fully rendered work like I do, right? That's why, look, let's be frank. When Jim Alabiso and Karen Quinn hired me in 1997, they hired me for two reasons. One, I was boisterous, which at first was a turnoff for them, but they got used to it, right? And secondly, (laughs) when I came in, they saw fully rendered work. They saw that I could draw and paint and conceptualize. Amazing. Storyboards or like literally like digital? I was a concept designer. I was a concept designer for them. I did those storyboards. This portfolio is as big as a kitchen table. Like, you know, the whole big portfolio thing. It's like great. I recall going, I didn't know anything about digital, but I had my Photoshop software. I had everything, you know, they were put in boxes back then, right? I put everything, I put it on the table. I said, look, y'all see my work? I don't know how to use any of this, but I want in. I'll do anything. I'll make coffee. And that's exactly what I did. But over within a very short period of time, they began to allow me to learn how to use a digital techno- technology to do my already existing, to enhance my already existing traditional skills. Now, to that point, AI, I'm, I'm not saying this for people here because we already know, for the audience that's listening, AI isn't going anywhere. It is here to stay. In, fa- yeah. in fact, oh, yeah. I would encourage those to, there's a, a, a video of Arthur C. Clarke, I think, from either the late 60s or the early, early 70s, where he's talking about the power of what 
artificial intelligence will do, that artificial intelligence may ultimately replace mankind. And Which that they refer to as the singularity. Being, right. The, you know, the whole, hmm. uh, what, Ray Kurzweil, uh, uh, that whole thing. I get it. Yes. What I'm saying is, where I, my interest is, it's like writing prompts, right? Mm -hmm. I, I do written prompts, but I do them in conjunction with my drawings, which are image prompts. Right. And the reason why I do that is because it allows me to reduce the most laborious part of drawing and painting, which is the freaking rendering. Correct. Spending hours and hours trying to add texture and detail. Sure, I could do it. I've done it for decades. But yeah. man. To have a piece of software that if you use the presets and many different software, I'm like, I don't want my work to look like um, any other artist's work. I want it to look like my work. Right. So I will import my drawings into the software. Okay. And when I use that as an image prompt, I will then write my prompt and say, okay, and it this uses is a it as a reference. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Can uh. we share a screen here? Can we share a screen here? Can we do that? Tracy, that's a question for you. Tracy, can we share the screen? We could. We could. <laughs> we or you could. can just hold up. And, is it on and, your phone? And i tell you or, what. Or, yeah. It is. You want me to try? Yeah, phone and, uh, yeah. Okay, we'll yeah, do the okay. phone. We'll do share. the phone. Perfect. Perfect. We'll do the phone. All right. Yeah, so check share, it out here. So share, I'm going to go share. here to the... I'm going to go here to the uh, 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 thread that I had with my good friend, Jim, right? Now, the idea mm. is that okay. what you do, hold on, give me a second here. Ah, here it is. Right here. All right. Check it out. This. Yeah. Yeah, move. There you go. Okay. That's so that's, 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 gotcha. That's your original sketch that you drew with your hand. In Photoshop. Gotcha. Okay. This, and then Tim. Okay. That is my refined ink line drawing done in Clip Studio Paint. I then took that image and I imported it into Doodle AI as an image prompt. My written prompt to correlate with it was basically black man, 30 years old, roughly, um, a white shirt, dark suspenders. Okay. This is what it gave me back. Oh, that's now, pretty awesome. Gave me, so Space. check it out. Check it out. It gave me back. And sorry about all the profanity in the screen there. Hold on. Well, what is this? They're sending me all the, this is all right. All right. Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> but hold on. So this image, the reason why it follows my drawing is because it's using a technology called edge detection. It's detecting okay. the lines in this drawing. Right? So, yeah. but here's the thing. This is not finished. That's not what I want. I want this. Where I take my drawings, as you can see the lines on it, I'm compositing my line artwork with the AI on top output. Of... Wow. And then from there, I'm doing this. I'm enhancing the drawing by doing what's called a paint over. It's a technique that's used in video game design. It's amazing. So yeah. basically, I'm painting. <laughs> So this with post-processing looks like this. I just love that. That's what you showed me last yeah. week. That was yes. just amazing. Yeah. So the idea of what you're doing is you are using AI to supplement your already existing tool set. Correct. That's what you're doing. So when exactly. Jim got me in, and Jim and Kieran said, hey, here's a tablet, start drawing. It, it's not that it kept me from drawing i still had to draw it's just that the the time that it takes to draw to clean to to yes. then post process was dramatically reduced what ai can do for traditional illustrators if they are not afraid of luddites is that it can dramatically enhance your output at this particular time at the time of this recording i'm 57 years old i always give my age <laughs> right i'll be 58 in a few months 
in my career, and Jim knows this, in my industry, which is the concept design industry, in the world of even five to 10 years ago, my career would be over. I would have been put out to pasture because there's always a young legion of younger workers who can do what I would do. Like when I, when I was working with Jim, you know, there were no digital illustration forums where people like Craig Mullins would show people how to paint in Photoshop. That didn't exist. You had to learn on your own. If you were lucky, you went to art school. If you didn't, you trained we were, on your own. We were pioneers back then, dude. Exactly. 19, 1998, 1999, we, turn of the century pioneers, buddy. It was before buddy. all of that. Exactly. So hey. what's happening now? Well, that's a wrap. Another fantastic episode of the podcast. You can find us on all the social media platforms, wherever you serve, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter X, threads, wherever. Don't forget to like, share, and comment. And on our YouTube channel, don't forget to like, share, comment, and smash that subscribe button. If you're streaming audio for the podcast, you can find us wherever you get your favorite podcast programs. In the meantime, I like to tell everybody, take care of yourselves and each other. Until next time. Peace.